wrong, so <laughs> I'm horrible. It's all good. Cool. All right. Well, let me go ahead and hit record. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the Drumheads Podcast special edition, guys. Uh, I know you guys have been uh, seeing the things about the raffle, and I am on uh, a Skype call with Joe Ezri. Did I say it right? Did I say it right? Yeah, that's better. <laughs> Okay, good. Okay. I uh, uh, If you guys are like wondering why I stress about that, because I just talked to to uh, Joe about how to say it right, and I said I'm going to screw it up, and I probably did, so my bad. But anyways, how are you? Doing good. Doing good? Just just hanging out? Yeah, hanging out. Got a couple of sick kids at home, so I've just been lounging. Yeah, I hear you. How, how many How many kids do you got? I've got a three-year-old and a one-year-old, two ah, boys. Two boys. I've, I've got I've got two boys as well. Let's see, six, uh, four, and then my daughter is almost three. So it's a it's a woo, crazy time. So if uh, uh, if you hear children in the background, it's mine or it could be yours. It's hard to say. <laughs> right. It's it's good. It's always good to to have the girl last because then you got the Overwatch built in. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And they're they're already like super protective of her, anyways. But then they're also super rough at the same time. It's like easy, 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 you know. But uh, yeah, toughen her up and don't let anybody mess with her. That's, yeah. That's plan. Oh yeah, she 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 comes at you uh, with a vengeance when like you do her wrong. Like if her brothers do her wrong, they're like, watch out, she's she's coming for you. Right. If she ever wants anything, she can probably cry wolf too, and that's a uh... yeah. She does that a lot, daddy. Yeah, so. <laughs> well, cool. Well, uh, to everybody who's listening to this, uh, yes, we, we are doing the raffle, but the way I kind of, I think we were going to approach this, we were going to uh, throw the drawing of the names uh, while we interview uh, uh, Joe about, you know, his, you know, his drums and what he does. So, uh, um, so we've got, so we got three drums on deck. Uh, we've got the drum from, uh, from a uh, manual from Era Drums. Then we've got the uh, Sean's drum from uh, Salt Drums, and then we've got yours, correct? Correct. Two right. snares, and uh, I'm I'm throwing up two two drums. They're like kind of like shallow concert toms, or mm-hmm. I just call them proto toms because they're like kind of prototype. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I play them on my kit. You can tune them low, and they sound okay for a kit. And you can tune them high, and they kind of are Tim ish Yeah, I was gonna say sounds. I, I like those when you kind of you can have like the the two sounds, you know, depending on how you tune them. You know, like I said, Tim Bali sound, or get that kind of you know Phil Collins kind of concert tom sound, which is really rad. So, but we'll we'll but we're gonna give these away uh, throughout the podcast, and we also have a little special tease for you guys. Uh, there was someone else who added a drum to the mix, and we'll tell you in the middle of the podcast to uh, create a little tease, a little suspicion. So uh, we have uh, that to look forward to. But uh, before we start, uh, why don't you just tell us a little about yourself and uh, you know your company and uh, you know what you do? Well, I uh, build drums. I uh, originally am from Southern California. I moved up to Portland about 10 years ago. And when I moved up to Portland, I sold my drum kit and didn't really have a chance to play. And Mm -hmm. when I finally went to say, like, hey, I want to get a new drum kit, I just wanted to build my own. So I started doing it. Um, It's kind of, it's just kind of the personality that I have, like, I kind of annoy my wife a lot of the times because she's like, oh, we need to buy this. And I'll be like, well, can we make it? (laughs) It's like, we can't make a dishwasher, you know? Right. (laughs) But uh, we did replace our dishwasher, and I did consider just fixing it rather than buying a new one. But since we're (laughs) renting it, I just went for the new one. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Yeah, I hear you. And uh, so so did you ever, like, you know, like refurbish drums or anything when you were younger? Or is it just something... You know, when you when you came to make you know want a new kit, you're like, I'm just gonna make my own. Well, I I, I would say when I you know first got my first drum kit, I definitely was. I mean, ever since I've been a little kid, it was like, you you don't want like 
let me bring them apart and mm-hmm. see how they work. And it's funny because that's how my son is too. Like he inspects every toy. Like he sometimes you're like, why don't you just play with the toy? But he's like trying to figure out how the thing works. And mm-hmm. so I was always interested in, you know, just the dynamics of how things work. So um, prior to like, you know, being forced to kind of build my own kit, uh-huh. I, you know, just wondered about the drums a little bit, but wasn't like super hundred percent, you know, just, just into playing them mostly. Yeah. Well, and you know, uh, I know when, you know, when you first start playing, you kind of have that, uh, you, you, you know, when you first start off, you get that used kit and it's kind of a Frankenstein kit and you've got to learn to, to fix it, you know, when something breaks. And, uh, it's, it sounds like you have more of that, you know, mechanical, I want to fix things, figure things out mind. Like I, I don't have that ability. Like I don't, yeah. <laughs> I can't build anything. It's pretty much, well, it's pretty much, I can paint a room and that's about it. You know, if anything breaks in my house, I'm screwed, you know? Right. Well, yeah, definitely when, you know, it's like the first kid I got, um, I, w- I was in high school and my parents got me a, like just a inexpensive uh, sunlight kit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that, you know, that thing, you know, you, you start playing drums and you just want to hit, hit them as hard as you can. So they don't really last when you start breaking them and you're still figuring out, you know, exactly what position you want everything to be in. So you have to loosen things up and yeah. threads get stretched and it's uh, it, everything goes downhill pretty quick. Yeah, it's it's a challenge for sure, you know, and uh, I would just get fed up my kick and like, you know, want to just like destroy it. But then I'm like, oh, if I destroy it, I won't have a kit. But, you know, uh, I, luckily my dad, he he was, you know, he's got the mechanical mind because he would, you know, tear apart cars, build houses and stuff like that. So like I had like him to fix it, but, like, you know, but uh, I just could never do it. So, um, so w- what age did you start playing drums at? Well, officially, I didn't get my first drum. Sixteen or seventeen, like junior year in high school, but uh-huh. I kind of always was lucky enough to have like a neighbor or a. At one point, um, when I was like in about second grade, we lived in a different neighborhood, and there was a music store at the top of my street, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, they had a soundproof room, so I could go. They would always just be like, "Oh, hey, Joe, what's up?" You know, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I'd always go in there and just smash on their drums. Nice. But I didn't really have the opportunity to play, like, daily until I, until I had my own kit. I had some kids in the neighborhood. They were older than me when I was, like, in middle school, and I'd go hang out and play with them. Mm-hmm. So who? So did you come from, like, a musical family at all? or? Uh... Uh, kind of. My dad, when we were kids, played guitar. He wasn't, like trained to play guitar he was he played by ear which was pretty amazing him and his brother both were super good guitar players like they could listen to a song and just like pick it out pick it out like almost instantly nice Uh, my mom my mom's an accordion player oh wow (laughs) which it's uh pretty fun around the hall oh yeah one too many she busts out the accordion (laughs) but For the most part, not not really a music family, more of a sports family, really. Oh, uh, okay, I hear you. I hear you. Well, I I always ask that question because I'm always very curious because like I grew up, my family, you know, didn't they weren't really into music. They were more into, you know, construction and things like that. So music wasn't a, you know, uh, a big thing. Like we didn't really listen to a lot of music. Uh, my dad had like they played the radio, but it was always like, uh, like you know, light, smooth. 80s, you know, laid back. I wouldn't even say rock, like pop, I guess you could say. You know, yeah. like, like, you know, the more commercial Elton John and Sting, stuff like that. But nothing, you know, they weren't really hardcore about it. It was just on in the background. So uh, it's, it's funny because it's usually two dynamics. It's either the parents played m- music all the time, were kind of semi musicians or professional, or they weren't at all. So, uh, yeah, my family, nobody in my family was really necessarily a musician. My grandpa played played music a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, definitely music was around. Like, my parents were both, you know, we had a big record collection at my house, so I was able to listen to music. But, oh, nice. You know, I kind of just got forced into the, the sports thing, which I loved playing sports as a kid, but, it, you know, being the youngest of four, it wasn't like 
they weren't going to take me to a music class when, you know, we could show up at the field and we could all play our soccer game or Mm -hmm. our baseball game, you know, just consecutively and be in one place for the day probably made it easier for my folks. Oh yeah, for sure. What, what sports did you play? Soccer, basketball, baseball, football, track and field. I did track and field from the time I was like, that was like the first sport I think I started doing. Oh wow. What was, what was the event that you like, like to do? I was a thrower. I I actually threw in high school, um, and you know I I was con- always kind of a, a larger kid, but I I could run pretty quick. So mm-hmm. I always I always liked you know r- running like the two hundred yard dash because I people would kind of eye me up and be like, oh, okay, this kid's gonna be easier than I. <laughs> I'd be like, nope, not gonna happen. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I hate to run though. That's the worst. Like like people are like. If I'm gonna run, I, I'm I'm either being chased by a zombie or something, or someone's trying to kill me. That's the only time I'm running. You know, it's just, ugh. but yeah, you know. I, I was never like a a runner for fitness or. Uh huh. I don't really like go jogging, but like as a kid, I I had plenty of energy. We we ran and we rode bikes and. Oh yeah, yeah. Got into school. What? Uh, how? What? Uh, how old are you? Just if you don't mind asking, because I'm curious to see if you're. Close to my age, I'll be thirty-four in December. Okay, so, I was born so in 82. okay, so I'm eighty-four. So we're we're in that same uh, same generation. It's it's a different time. I remember just going like all day. I would get on my bike and just like like ride around the. I wouldn't even call it the neighborhood. Just like the side of like you know where we lived. It was kind of like a, a house every like maybe a thousand feet so they were they weren't all crammed in there was there was distance and it's in the mountains and so i would just my mom would just let me go and i would just be gone all day and just show back up you know for dinner (laughs) was your was your parents the same way yeah uh let let me is not really the term kind of like Go. Get out of the house and don't come back until the streetlights come on. (laughs) It's a different time. I mean, being a parent now, you're like, wow, my parents let me do that? They are so irresponsible. It's not even funny, you know, because now everyone's like, you know, you can't let your kid kid out of their sight. You know, you got to be on them all the time, you know, and it's it's just a different time. It's so, it's so, it's so. None of us ever got hurt, but we definitely did some stupid shit running across the (laughs) freeway and I mean, I, yeah, I hear. Yeah, that. we survived. Yeah, I, I I went on this kick of like I would go like searching for like uh like beer bottles, just like just and I would I found like this like nineteen seventies like zipper top beer can that was full. I think I still own it too somewhere. You know, just like just doing random stuff like that. It's just you know, yeah. But uh, did did you do like uh did you do school band or were you kind of more into garage bands or uh when you were in high school yeah d- no uh i don't i don't have any formal drum training um okay. i was in band in middle school for half a semester uh-huh. and uh, I, wa- I wanted to play the bass the oh. stand up bass but yeah yeah there was only one bass and two people already playing it so they're like oh we'll just play the cello uh, mm-hmm, it's the mm-hmm. same thing and in hindsight i wish i would have stuck to it but i just was that kid like I don't want to fucking play the cello. Like <laughs> I want to play the bass, you know. So like. Yeah, yeah. I. Uh, I kind of got over it. I I did school band, but I can't read music to save my life. Um, I'm dyslexic, so all the all the notes on the page just look like, you know, just a big mess. And uh, you probably you probably picked that up in our on our email correspondence through the raffle. You know, be like, what what is he saying? This makes no sense. <laughs> I hope so. I, I, I picked it up when you were when you were saying Ezra. I was like, does he not know that it's A R Y and not R A Y? <laughs> yeah, see, there it is. There it is. There, there's the dyslexic part for sure. Because, uh, yeah, it, it would it, it still drives me nuts. Because I'll be I'll be like driving down the road and I'll see a car for sale and it will say like you know I, in my mind I see two thousand dollars. No, it says you know two thousand or twenty four thousand. You know, I leave out zeros. I leave out numbers and yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, that's like my wife. She'll be like, "Whoa, it's it's only it's only two dollars." It's like, "Well, it's two ninety nine, so it's more like three dollars." <laughs> yeah, I hear you. 
so so the uh, so so it sounds like the garage brand was kind of more your your route. Yeah, I uh, I have yet to actually play in a band uh, as a drummer. I oh, okay. the band the band I was in in high school. I was actually singing in. Oh really? This accident. Yeah, I was like uh, I was hanging out with these dudes. They were my neighbors. Um, they had this girl living with them and she was the singer of the band and mm -hmm. she moved out, quit the band and they were like, Hey, we still want to practice with lyrics. Like, uh, you know, all the songs you want to sing along with them. And I was like, sure. And then one day they're like, Hey, uh, we kind of like more than the old singer. You want to like be in the band? And I was like, yeah, maybe whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they pulled the full cat. Yeah. Just kind of accidentally, yeah, accidentally became the singer of a thrash band and, Nice. So, so who who were those first drummers that you kind of looked up to? Um, well, pretty much all the classic rock drummers. Um, you wow. know, I grew up li living uh, like you know what, what the music that my parents listened to was a lot of um, like Steely Dan, Foreigner, mm -hmm. just uh, good classic rock. Um, Bonham, yeah, for sure. Uh, Phil Collins, I, you said him. That was one of my favorite drummers. Oh yeah. Uh, when I started playing, and um, uh, Mike Borden from Faith No More. Yeah, and, yep. Uh, um, Brad Wilk, Rage Against the Machine was like a big, big part of like when I started playing and I wanted to play heavy. I listened to a lot of Rage. So. Oh yeah, yeah. That that guy, that dude. He he's very underrated in my book as a drummer. Oh for sure. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, they, they I, but I don't know, Rage, Rage, they get labeled as like, kind of like that, the rap core. And I'm like, they're not really rap. I mean, the, the guy sings in a, you know, a rapish fashion, I guess you could say, but I wouldn't say they're like, uh, like Limp Biscuit or something like that. They always kind of got lumped into that, that new metal kind of thing at one point. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, well, they were a bit heavier and then, you know, whatever, uh, Tom Morello was doing with the guitar was like like nothing anybody had ever heard. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was DJ scratching his guitar and stuff. That oh, shit's yeah. cool. It is. It's bad. I mean, it's just like you know, just that. <laughs> especially that Bulls on Parade, you know, and that that one yeah. breakdown. You know, he's just going to town, and it does. It sounds like a like a you know a DJ just scratching on a uh, on a turntable. Right. Yeah. And that's like for me, it's like kind of weird. Like I, you know, I'm definitely a drummer. I've spent more more time behind the drum kit than any other instrument but mm -hmm. like usually with bands like i notice the bass first and i think it's a complimentary thing you know it's like yeah yeah what i'm looking to play along with but like rage has the most badass ass bass player mm -hmm. faith no more which is one of my favorite bands has an awesome bass player so that's kind of what attracts me like i think sting's a super badass bass player oh yeah for sure <laughs> I saw I saw the police on their reunion tour uh, back in '07. Uh, that was my wife's like uh, that was the same year we got married, and that was our that was her uh, wedding gift to me was to get tickets to the police. And I was like, oh, this is because Stuart Copeland's my favorite drummer of all time, and because uh, I would always complain, I'm like, you know, it sucks. They broke up like the year I was born. I'm like, I'm never gonna see this band perform live, and you know when they came out and. Did the reunion tour? I'm like, I've got. It. I'm gonna see them. Come hell or high water, right. I'm gonna see the police. So, and it was it was funny because this that was the same year that Genesis got back together. I'm like, oh, such a like, which one? You know, Phil Collins and Sting or the Police? Which one do I choose? You know? So, are, so are you more of a are you more of a Phil Collins or Peter Gabriel fan? I I actually like Phil Collins. I I Peter Gabriel stuff. He was just too like wackadoo, just like way out there kind of guy, and I don't know what, what's your what's your preference. I I I have a, a a really really strong affinity for drummers that sing. Phil Collins. Uh, Don Henley. I grew up listening to the Eagles. Don Henley's the ah, man. Ah yes yes that's one nice. of my favorite my favorite band of all time is the band. Ah, uh, yes, leave, yes. On, leave on helm i mean when you drum and sing you're you're badass like you're on a net, another level in my book oh yeah for sure and it's it's a very hard thing to do because i've been in like some cover bands and i thought i could sing i don't think i can 
<laughs> I tried. And it, it's a hard thing to do at the same time, to sing and play drums, because, you know, especially if the lyrics are not, like, in rhythm with the, with the I guess, the melody, it's, it's a hard thing to do. Yeah, you could definitely uh, start sounding robotic if you're yeah. just trying to but, but, do but, the backbeat yeah. and sing along with it. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, uh, let's see. I think this would probably be a good chance to... Uh, to uh, draw a name for a drum. So, uh, which drum shall we choose? Let's choose. Uh, let's choose. Let's do Era uh, drum. Uh, uh, man, uh, Manuel's drum. I don't uh, know, I don't what's know. his name? His name's Manuel. Yeah, Manuel. Sorry. Yeah. I I, I love the podcast of him because uh, he's from Oxnard and I grew up in Ventura, which is like right next door to Oxnard and like listening to him talk just like I was like dude this dude right here is like totally just like one of the dudes that like I grew up around for sure nice yeah and he was actually he's one of the first uh or he is the first uh custom drum builder I had on the podcast uh, a long time ago so it was uh when he when he said that he was gonna do a drum for the raffle it was uh it was so nice to have him you know be part of it because uh he's been he's been with the podcast for a long time for sure yeah, I've I kind of like felt like having not been on the podcast, I was like kind of the outsider. I didn't know like how everybody was going to react to me like, you know, being like, "Well, who's this guy?" you know, but like those dudes like are all cool as hell and they like didn't hesitate. Every single one of them was like, "Yeah, dude, for sure. Like, we got this." Yeah, it 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 was it's it was an amazing thing uh when, you know, when you when you reached out to me cuz you know, it was it kind of like to be honest, it kind of threw me off a little bit. I'm like, really? I'm like, I'm, I'm not that important. <laughs> I'm just some schmuck from North Carolina, you know. And uh, you know, and, and with your uh, with your wisdom and your, you know, you 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 kind of like, no, you're you know, you're doing a you're doing a solid for the drum community here. You know, it's the least we can do. I'm like, okay, you know, <laughs> it still just blows my mind because I feel like eh, I'm just a nobody. But, uh, yeah, I, for sure. Well, that was when me and you first started talking. That was like you were like, "Hey, maybe you want to come on the podcast." And I was like, "I don't know who would want to hear me talk about anything." And you're like, "No, dude. Like, like what you just said. I'm just some schmuck from North Carolina, you know." <laughs> so like, yeah, I, I think that's kind of like everybody's kind of you know like on the same level. Like none of us are trying to be like anything more than we are, which is cool. Yeah, for sure. And you know, and it's easy. I was when I was talking to to Joey Bones. You know, I was talking about. You know, it's easy. You, I could have gone out and try to reach out to these big time companies like Zildjian or Tama, and but I think it's important to have the perspective of the you know the people, you know, doing it in their garage or doing it you know uh, part time, full time, whatever. But you know, uh, kind of the voice of the little guy because that's how I feel I am. It's just a just a little guy. So, well, that's I, that's I think why people love you because. There's definitely, you know, there's other drum podcasts that are corporate sponsored and things and like mm -hmm. you you know, you're you give that more like that homey feel, you know. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, cuz everyone's like, you know, where do you record? I'm like, I'm recording in my kids' playroom, uh surrounded by Star Wars toys and more Star Wars toys, you know. <laughs> right? It's nothing fancy. I I started building drums in my kitchen, which I don't think my old roommate was super into, but it's like <laughs> he lived in an apartment and that was the that was the cleanest floor to have basically where or ah. the easiest floor to clean, so that's where I built drums is in my kitchen. Nice, nice. Cool. Well, we'll draw that name. So the way uh way we've got this set up guys is uh he's got all the names. Uh you got them in a drum, right? Isn't that what you said? Uh, yeah, I got this. Uh, I got this ten by eight inch uh, maple shell here with no hardware and a tape and a head tape to the bottom of it. And nice. I've got everybody's name printed out. If you donated ten or twenty or thirty for every entry, I put your name in one time. Cool. All right. So, 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 we're, so uh, you're gonna pull out that first name, and uh, that's gonna be the winner of the Era Drumhead. Or drum head, <laughs> drum from. Uh, you, so you do you got your drum kit? Are you gonna do a? Uh, let's see. Are you gonna do a? Let's see if I can do a drum roll. Uh, I'm right. I'm right beside it. Let's see which one's closest to me. This one right here. All right. Who we got? We got a gentleman by the name of Cyrus Hyduska. Hyduska. 
Oh, that's a that's a powerful name right there. Sounds like a he should be like cousins with Thor. I shall we do everybody's name in the accent we think they belong to? <laughs> Iduska. Iduska. Yes, yes, we should. <laughs> Let's see if I can find this gentleman uh, on Instagram and see if he's on there. What was his first name? His name is Cyrus. He he actually uh, he's one of the few people that actually left their Instagram handle here. So I've okay. got that for you. You got, you got the handle? Hit me up. It's O-V-N-I-L-A-B. Uh, let's see. I've got one right here. It looks like a drummer. Ovnilab? Av- Ovnilab, that's who I've got, yeah. Ovnilab, you are the winner. So I'm going to I'm gonna follow this gentleman so I know to let him know. You think we should like uh, like do a post while we're doing this and saying that this guy won? While we're doing yeah, it, yeah. If you want to, um, yeah. I just, so basically, um, is is now a good time to to announce the other situation? Oh cause... yes, yes, yes. Why don't Why don't you uh, Why don't you do that? And uh, and we'll while I'm uh, letting our good friend Haduska uh, that he want a drum. Okay, so we've got uh, our buddy, our our good good buddy, buddy love. <laughs> One of the best builders out there has decided that he wants to help with you with this whole thing, and he's donated a, a steel snare. Um, so basically, how it's going to go down is we're going to run another raffle this week, and everybody that that already entered into the raffle with multiple entries is going to get one entry into that, and then that's going to be the love drum the 1710 drum and the predator percussion drum getting raffled off. I don't know, like a week for a week from today. Yeah. I don't know. If we've, I don't know if we've established the exact day, but we'll, we'll um, yeah, we'll establish the exact day. Uh, cause, uh, like we were, we were talking, uh, before the podcast that, uh, I'm doing Thanksgiving at Christmas, which sounds weird. Uh, so I'm going to be, uh, out of town just for a little bit. And, um, Oh, there's his drum. And uh, yeah, so we'll we'll work on the details, and it, it also gives everybody a little more time if they uh, were like, oh, I forgot to buy tickets. You know, are we gonna still make tickets available to uh, to purchase as well, or are we cutting it off? No, we can we can keep getting getting donations here because uh, we had a tentative goal of uh, you know about two k, and we didn't quite get there. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of uh do do we want to do another drum roll and just go ahead and, and tell you how much we're at right now? Is that is that yeah. what we want to do? Yeah, let me uh, let me get the sticks back out. Get over here so What are we at? We are currently at eleven hundred and fifty five dollars and eleven cents. Oh wow. It's kind of a random number because some people, when they donated, they like they didn't gift it or whatever. They like paid for goods and services. So oh, okay, yeah, it's all good. I mean, it's yeah. it's pennies on the dollar. It should it should be like an even eleven sixty, I believe, somewhere in there. Nice. But well, yeah, what do you, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? But uh, that wow, that's that's incredible uh, that everyone has you know, like I said. It just this still just blows my mind that people have uh, you know taken time to, you know, to reach out and do that. So, right. And then uh, me and uh, King's Drum are also going to be doing this week a a T-shirt rally. Um, I I think he may have already announced it or busted a post on Instagram about it, but it's like fifteen dollars. Uh, he designed this. Uh, pretty cool shirt that just says hashtag drum fam on it with like some cross sticks nice nice and uh those are going to be like 15 dollars. i think there's a limited amount of them like Mm -hmm. 50 or 100 maybe and then um some of the proceeds from that are going to go into into this paypal account that we got going and i i haven't really done the exact math but i think that once all those shirts are sold, it's going to be like another four or five hundred bucks. That's every every amount uh, counts, and you know it's uh, it's awesome. It's uh, I might buy the shirt too. 
<laughs> can I? Well, I have, I have. Don't don't quote me on this, but because I, I haven't confirmed with King, I, I wanted to actually talk to him prior to this podcast and just didn't have a chance. But I yeah. think we're gonna try to um, set aside a shirt for everybody involved. Oh, okay, cool. So so Era and Salt and um, everybody that donated a drum, we're we're, we're probably just gonna plug a shirt. Nice. Uh, and yourself included in that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I'll, I'll put this caveat out there. If you guys do buy a shirt, uh, uh, it'll get you an automatic repost to the, to the, to the feed. So, uh, you know, um, anytime you wear it, just tag me. I'll put it up regardless, you know. So if you, <laughs> if you, if you do 50 p- uh, p- uh, pictures a day and they're, you're in that shirt, I'll do it 50 times, you know, just to, just to spread the love. So I think I've almost got this post set up. It's 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 hard to multitask and make sure you're not being dyslexic at the same time. So we'll just make this short and sweet. Uh, the winner of the drum. Uh, I have it backwards. <laughs> being dyslexic sucks. <laughs> and just just to clarify too, so so Cyrus now wins this drum. He's got one entry for for the for the uh, well. I sh- I shouldn't say that right now. So he can't he can't win again today. But if he donated more than ten dollars, he mm-hmm. if he if he donated anything more than ten dollars, he's his his other entry is going to automatically go into next week's. Nice. So I don't know if we want to make it to where anybody can win multiple drums. Uh, we kind of didn't really establish that, but uh, I don't know. You make that. We'll see if it happens. I'd like to maybe spread the love a little bit more than just yeah. like have one dude mop it up. We'll see if, if we happen to draw the name twice while we're doing this whole thing. Then we'll see if the odds are uh, if in that favor. Um, we probably should just limit it to one just so everybody has a chance to, you know, that that would be horrible luck if someone just ended up buying, like, or winning all the drums, you know, but, well, come on, man. Why does that get them all? So, yeah. All right. Well, strike what I just said, Cyrus. You want to drum? Can't <laughs> you, win again. You can't win again. But you know, if you if you do want to donate more, God bless. How about it? Yeah. All right. That's so, what I'm talking about. Yeah. So let me uh, finish this post. Thank you. I hear. I hear. I hear uh, is that a small child in the background? Yeah, my my older son Jude. He must have done something kind, and he got thanked for it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, they uh, they. They always want that affirmation when they do something right. When it's wrong, they forget about it. <laughs> Don't tell me I'm doing something wrong. That's my that's my kid's <laughs> attitude all the time. Right. He he gets he gets all the the affirmation from mom and mm-hmm. dad just yells at him. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. It's uh, some, there's those days you just like just want to pull your hair out. So I got they, my kids get the look. The look. I, I've been trying to work on my look because my dad would give this look and it was. You know, it was a pretty, um, like, yeah, (laughs) I'm going to, you know, uh, it's not going to be pretty if I get, you know, angry. So, but, uh, it worked. It worked for sure. All right. Don't make me pull this bitch over. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Well, uh, so, uh, to continue on with the podcast, let's see where, so, um, we were talking about drummers. So, uh, you're not a full-time drum builder or anything like that. So what do you do by day? So I'm a I'm a metal fabricator. I work for a small company here in Portland. We uh, we build uh, re like retail fixtures. Mm-hmm. So I mean, if you were a lot of, a lot of the work we do is with Nike. Nike's located up here in uh, in oh, Beaverton. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, if if you go to a store, a sporting goods store, I don't know what do you have on the East Coast like. Uh, uh, we got Dicks. Um, sporting yeah, so goods. if you go into Dicks Sporting Goods, I just was at Dicks like. Everybody loves Dick's Sporting mm-hmm. Goods. <laughs> yep. I was, An unfortunate, was over there. Unfortunate I name. I know. What was he thinking? <laughs> Richards would have been fine, right? Yeah, Richards. Yeah, just Richards Sporting Goods. Yeah. Yeah. So any any Nike display that that you'd see, like at a Dick Sporting Goods, that's the kind of stuff that we build. Nice. And uh, so, has any of that like helped you as a you know? A, learning you know how to do building drums and stuff like that yeah absolutely i mean i actually um was a just a warehouse manager in food service for the last um 
eight and a half years, and I've only been uh, working at the place I work at now for like a year and a half. So I started there a year and a half ago as a laborer, and they were like, well, you know, you want to train to become a fabricator. And, I mean, just working with numbers constantly, tape measure and stuff, and just like seeing how things are assembled and built, Mm -hmm. even though it's not wood, it's metal. Um, has made me a much better uh, drum builder, and it's gave me a lot, lot more patience. You know, you like the whole like measure twice, cut once type thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've uh, I, since I've uh, started doing that kind of work. Mm, okay. Yeah, I, it's funny how you know your day job can can influence you know uh, you know your drum building or or whatever. Uh, I'd like to wish that my day job helped <laughs> help me with the podcast and drumming. It doesn't. Uh, it's uh, I work in a medical where uh, uh, medical supply warehouse, and it's just you know formula and diapers and stuff coming in, and they go out, and it's just like those blue, blue, the same thing each day. So it's uh, but but that I do from time to time. I get to go out and see you know patients in their house and stuff like that. It's cool, but you know. Uh, you know, drumming and being here with my family, that's that's what I live for. So I, uh, it's, it's what pays the bills, kind of. When you first said diapers, I was thinking like baby diapers, but you're talking about adult diapers, Yeah, huh? adult, the adult diapers, like these, they're huge. They're like, you know, um, luckily we don't, we don't deal with, you know, the process of them going on. We just give them to the, to the people and, uh, and that's it. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, definitely i couldn't do that job there'd be no way no way i could do it but yeah um and so uh so what what was the first drum you actually built the um i i the first kit that i built like so when i when i first decided i was going to build myself a drum i i mean i think a lot of people start with snares i just started with a full kit like i had owned a snare that i liked which was a uh yamaha uh, steve jordan signature snare wow. snare yeah yeah nice which is the, if you've seen on my instagram there's a there's a snare that has like a dragon painted on it uh-huh, uh-huh. That, that's actually that that shell i had oh. my brother who's a tattoo artist paint it nice I'll to, and I'll uh the repost yeah that was a I worked at Guitar Center and I hit that snare and was like, "Man, this snare sounds good. I want to buy it." And uh, I ended up getting one off like Craigslist for like a super good deal. And uh, so I just went straight into building kits. I built a bass drum. Um, that was the first drum I built myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, it took me like two years to build that first kit that I built for myself because it was like uh, kind of like that Johnny Cash song, one piece at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah that's kind of how i did it it was like okay well now that the bass drum's done and uh i re- i upcycled all the hardware so i like bought a an old uh, sonar bass drum mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh just ripped all the hardware off of it and stripped it powder coated it and put it on a maple shell nice nice i uh, i tried that once and it ended up disastrously <laughs> I uh I got a I found a Atomic kit on Craigslist and uh I'm like I'm going to try to like refinish it take the the wrap off and all that and um couldn't get the wrap off uh like I asked some guys on Instagram like hey how do you do this and they're like you do it this way and you need this you need that I'm like I'm like Ugh, okay never mind I'll just paint it with spray paint <laughs> right we do uh we do powder coating at my work so we have a huge uh ah. 400 400- 400 degree oven and anything that's wrapped i just about eight minutes in that oven and it just falls right off it's nice yeah no yeah they're like you need a you need a heat gun and you need this you need that i'm like this sounds like way too much work i don't have that kind of patience <laughs> yeah that's yeah the cool. heat gun thing the heat gun thing doesn't work that well for me because it ends up kind of like melting the the, melting. the vinyl itself on the outside you know but the I mean, obviously, like if you're at your house with an oven, you're not going to put a bass drum in your <laughs> kitchen oven. So yeah. that big work helps quite a bit. Yeah. Well, and then like I read with like uh, with the hardware, if you're like if you're wanting to paint the hardware, you gotta you gotta first like scrub the chrome if it's already got like a chrome finish, and you've got to uh, uh, 
make it almost pitted so the, the the paint can stick to it. And then you gotta like put it in the oven, like you said. And I think I I I'd spray painted some hardware and I put it in the oven. And I'm like, this is probably not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> the 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 trick of the trade, which is not something I learned building drums, but I used to be uh, super into paintball. Uh-huh. And I worked at a paintball store and like was kind of like a technician. But uh, if you take uh, Drano crystals, if mm-hmm. you can still find them, I know they're they're tough to find, but you just put Drano crystals in water and anything that you put in there that's chrome, uh-huh. that shit will just eat the chrome right off. Really? Huh. Yeah. That's interesting. Don't breathe, don't breathe that shit in, though. You, <laughs> <laughs> A.K.A. don't do it in your house with the windows yeah. closed. Yeah, do, do it outside. You're outside with a fan going. <laughs> I'll have to look into the crystals. That's, that's I've never heard of that. Hmm. That would probably been handy because that, that was the one part that I really struggled with was trying to get the, the paint to stay on the the hardware and like the lugs and all that so uh <laughs> when i interview these when the every time i interview like you know people like you or whoever about drums i'm like I'm like I should have talked to this person before i did my project but you know <laughs> it is what it is right yeah uh-oh <laughs> so, what's up are you still doing it yeah it is. It's. It's not. It's not the first time. Trust me, my friend. That's the young one. He's. Uh, he's teething and he's sick. So it's oh, like. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. We've been drinking. We've been drinking a lot of coffee lately. <laughs> yeah. Here. Yeah. Here. Yeah. It's. Uh, those. My. You know. Uh, my wife's kind of like. She's. Still wanting to have more kids. I'm like. Uh, do You really want to go back to that? <laughs> I'm like, How, what's the What's the gap between the the two oldest? Uh, the two, uh, let's see, my oldest son is six and a half, and then, uh, the other one is four, or he'll be four and a half in December, and then, then the three-year-old, she'll be three in, uh, on the 25th, so there's not a big, there's not a big gap between her and her, uh, middle brother, so. Yeah, the old, the old Irish twins, that's, my uh, boys are only, like, 20, 20 months apart, so. Yeah, yeah, that's. My uh, my wife's family was like that. Like they were all uh, really close. Like me and my sister are all, we're almost two years apart, uh, exactly. Like uh, six days shy of it. Yeah, that's me and all my siblings. It's like two years, two years, and then me and my sister are only eighteen months apart, I believe. Mm-hmm. Now my dad, my dad's funny because he uh, uh, he is the youngest of four, but him and his uh, oldest sister are 18 years apart. Oh wow! There's a he was a surprise, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. Huh? Yeah, to say the least. Yeah, it was <laughs> he was a big surprise to my family. So, uh, but yeah. Um, so, uh, what kind of drummers are you into now? You know, now that you're, uh, you know, father. You know, do you still listen to the same music growing up, or did you kind of? mellow out or i listen i don't listen to the heavy stuff anymore really Mm -hmm. now i pretty much predominantly listen to country music and reggae music Mm -hmm. so um sometimes if i put my headphones on when i'm playing out in the garage it's usually like david allen co or all that classic country i love that shit yeah yeah that's uh it's funny growing up in the south i never really liked country uh it just never, it's never on the menu growing up, I guess you could say. Well, yeah, we, we were unlucky because we grew up in a generation where we were, li- if you wanted to turn the radio on and listen to country, you were listening to what I call butt country. It's, you know, <laughs> uh, Billy, Billy Ray Cyrus. Yeah, and the Alan Jackson, and, you know, I, like, I can name all these country artists, I just never listen to their music. Brooks and Dunn, and, uh, like one of my favorite places to eat is uh, Texas Roadhouse, but I'm like, I can't stand the music in this place. <laughs> right. Yeah, but you know, to each his own. It's just, uh, I just never, never could like, you know, ne- never could get into country music. I, I res- like Johnny Cash. I like, but that's more like I don't know. He's a different. I guess. Well, how would you could classify Johnny Cash? Well, he's country, but I mean. 
I see people saying that they don't like country, but they'll wear a Johnny Cash shirt, which I don't necessarily agree with. But, <laughs> you know, if, it's like if you if you say that you like country or you like reggae, like I just said, those two styles of music. But like mm-hmm. the only thing you know is Johnny Cash or Bob Marley. Bob Marley, yeah. Then, then you really you're, you're not as big of a fan, in my opinion, as you think you are. Yeah, yeah, that's that's for sure. I, I, yeah, I agree with that. That sounds about right. There's there's those posers that just like to wear the the shirts because you know it's kind of the hip hipster thing to do. It's like, do you even know who that is? Yeah, it's the you know whoever. Like, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like so. saying that you are into heavy metal, but your favorite band is Disturbed. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, <laughs> yeah, heavy metal. I'm into uh, I'm into Lincoln Park and uh, um, uh, what's what's that other band that everyone rags? Oh, Nickelback. Don't be hating on Nickelback and Creed now. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I saw Creed in concert a long time ago. Uh, it was all right. Okay. We, yeah, we, we still like you. Yeah, I, I, I I'm full disclosure. So, well, uh, let's let's do another drum. I think we should do uh, Sean's drum from Salt Drums. Salt Drums. He's a. Uh... He's giving away a pretty cool drum. It's I think it's one of those. Uh, it's kind of like acrylic, but something else. Oh yeah, like the um, like the powdered, almost acrylic in a way. Yeah, it's it's really rad looking. So uh, we'll do the drum roll on on my Stuart snare drum this time. A little different. You good to go? What do we got? Oh, this is great. The luckiest guy on Instagram. Why don't you tell me who won? Luckiest guy. <laughs> are you, are, are you going to tell me it's Joey Bones? It's Joey Bones. <laughs> <laughs> he is the luckiest guy on Instagram. So nice. Well, whoever that troll was on Love's post talking shit about him winning that drum kit, don't come at me with no bullshit because you'll <laughs> yeah. get it. Yeah, we, we will all come after you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, that's going to be fun. Uh, Joey Bones. Gosh, he is the luckiest guy. Gosh. I'm going to start like, hey, uh, um, who's going to win the lottery, Joey? You know, like, oh, it's going to be 10, 7. No, dude. What's your, what's your lucky number, dude? I think Powerball's at like $258 million right yeah. now. Yeah. Could you buy like 20 of them and just give them to me? Yeah. <laughs> so, maybe uh, maybe if he touches them. Well, I don't know. He didn't touch this one, but he's got something going on. Yeah, he's got something going on. So let me see if uh, I can't remember if he put a. Is there a picture of Sean's drum on here, on his thing? I'm looking at it. Yeah, you can't win if you don't play. But I I was just seeing that he, that he just purchased one of those uh, old steel drums from Love too. So <laughs> he's gonna be all snared out. He is gonna be all snared out. Uh, I'm trying to find a picture of uh, of his drum. You should just be able to go to Salt's IG, maybe, and yeah, I'm on, his, I'm on his IG, but he he had posted a video, but I I don't see it now. Where did that's gonna it? that's gonna be on one of my accounts, I think. We'll see. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Knowing Joey, he'd be like, "Oh, uh, yeah, you you can keep it, do it again, or something." I don't know. Where did it go? It's like it just disappeared. It's not even on your account. Well, that, that that I don't no no pressure because because I'm a I'm a collector and if I was on the other side of this raffle like if, if even <laughs> as a builder or something uh-huh. if I want a drum I'd I'd want to keep it just to have it in the collection or whatever so yeah for sure. Joey congratulations um yeah. one of the dudes from because uh, there's been a few builders that have donated so I kind of hit a few of them up and was like hey dude like I know you build drums mm-hmm. do you really want to win this and and uh, there's a gentleman, uh, I don't really know his name, but he owns a company called Cog Drums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, hey, you know, like, if I win that drum, I'm just going to donate it to, to like, a school or something. Oh, nice. Uh, well, that's, I, so, I, I didn't think if it, if, if, if Joe, Joey was inclined to not win it, which I hope he is inclined to win it, yeah, cause I, good, but if he is, he can always just take it upon himself to donate it to a good cause and yeah. in anybody's name that he wishes to. Yeah. No, yeah. It, yeah. I, it, I don't begrudge anybody who, you know, like you said, they, you know, they win it and they want to have it. God bless. That's your choice. So, uh, yeah. 
Well, I'll, uh, uh, I'll, uh, I, I think I'll have to go on Twitter to find his drum, but uh, we'll, we'll continue on with the podcast, and I can post that one in a sec. But uh, so I guess to kind of uh, you know wrap up this you know this uh, this podcast, which is this has been fun doing because it's like we're doing like three things at once, you know, announcing winners, doing an interview, and then you know uh, um, just I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure what the third thing is. I'm blanking on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, got, I want to ask you a question. Sure, we're yeah. gonna, we're gonna let's let's flip the roles here. Yeah, you uh, you I've heard you on the podcast talk about Stuart Copeland being your favorite drummer, but you're also a big movie buff. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you were you were a fan of his as a musician first before you were a fan of his as a all star film score director. Yeah, I uh, I'm trying to think. I remember listening to like. Uh, Every breath you take on the radio, and really liking that beat that he threw down. But like, uh, to be honest, it never really grew until I got into high. Actually, it was like a senior in high school, and I was flipping through like a modern drummer magazine, and I stumbled across like uh, they did an article about like signature sounds, and they were talking about Don Henley, and that was my guy. I loved the sound of his snare drum on Hotel California and all the Eagles albums. But they had Stuart Copeland, and I read it, and it's like known for his defined high pitch sound. You know, uh, um, like they use the word like controversial sound, I think, which I'm like, it's just high pitch. What's very controversial about it? So I like dove into listening to the police and like really got hooked, and I'm like, that's my sound because I love tuning my snare drum as high as I can and to get that pop. And, right. And then I, it just went from there. So, uh, I, uh, then, then I like went into like listening to like the movie scores for like Wall Street and like uh, Rumblefish, all these like uh, late '80s movies that he did. So that was that was the love for Stuart Copeland, and then finding his uh, his other stuff for sure. Nice. Yeah, yeah he, there the early Police stuff is like rad. The the punk rocks kind of oh yeah ska stuff. I love that stuff. Well, it's funny because he. Like that band like changed like two albums like after two albums they like completely flipped. Uh, like uh, Zinnia Montada is probably my favorite Police album because it's a good mixture of the first two albums and then the last two albums. It was like right in the middle, and uh, but it, it still had that punk kind of new wave sound that they're famous for. But you know, um, yeah, yeah. What what songs are on that album? Uh, don't stand close that close to me. Um, uh, let's see what else. Hang on, I was trying to find a picture of Sean's drum and I found it on Twitter. Uh, I never, I never, I only had like a, I never owned any individual police albums, but uh-huh. um, I had like, well, I, I actually had like a like a huge like greatest hits book mm-hmm. so i don't I, I don't like i just know like all their greatest hits more but this was a big book so it was like more like the, mm-hmm. their, their whole discography but like individual albums so yeah well they only, they only have five albums because they have you know it's very short careers from 1979 to well 78 is when they formed and they broke up uh late 83 84 depending on what member says what <laughs> and uh you know right. they, they just blew through doing five albums, toured, 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 didn't want to play with each other anymore and broke up, you know, and uh, which was a shame, but also I think it left a great catalog of music to listen to uh, because they, they could have continued doing it and they could have gotten to a rut and, you know, I guess you could say sold out for a lesser word because it's what cracks me up is every breath you take is everyone's like, oh, it's such a such a nice sweet love song i'm like no it's about stalking <laughs> you know there's nothing sweet ab- there's right. nothing sweet about uh writing a song from the point of view of your ex-wife stalking you while you're sleeping you know uh that's that's creepy <laughs> i i always uh not not to like make fun of that song but more make fun of the other people like if i'm at work and that song comes on i'm always like is this puff daddy <laughs> oh yes oh yes <laughs> yeah we remember you biggie we remember you biggie yeah it's yeah i forgot about that that's that's take old hits from the 80s yeah, yeah 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 for sure hello i'm being joined by a, a member of the family hello what are you she's a doggy 
Come here, you can sit with my you can sit with my lap. Come here. Come here. All right. But yeah, um Hi, hi Bella. You want to say hi to everybody? Say hi. Hi. Okay, she says hi. <laughs> but uh nice. yeah, um but to I guess to end the podcast and we'll end the podcast I guess by giving away your drum. But uh what what is your um iPod. Yeah, you've got my iPod. Uh is what is your um what's your goal for your your company? You just kind of want to, you know, just make drums for people when you kind of want to or just make them for yourself or mm-hmm. or what well right now i play them every drum i make is essentially i mean i've i've only commissioned one drum kit mm-hmm. and uh, i've i've only sold like three snares um go right ul- ultimately snare. my my dream is for me to teach my sons how to build drums and have them make s3 percussion something one day you know but oh okay i hear you because like i i I don't really, you know, see myself being able to, you know, step away from my full time gig at, as a as a um, head of household. So building drums full time probably mm-hmm. will will for me not not be something um, that happens. You know, I got the West Coast Drum Supply thing to hopefully, you know, try to help other builders get hardware. Which yeah. And, I wanted to ask you about well, so what is, what is the connection between you and and West Coast uh, Drum Supply? There's a there's a full connection. West Coast Drum Supply is me and my wife's company, and uh, oh, okay, okay, I, so okay. That, yeah, that pretty that pretty face that you see uh, on that on that Instagram. That's that's what I get lucky enough to lay down with every night. So. Very nice, very nice, very nice. I, that, I was I was. I, my, my wife and I had put that together. Like that's that's got to be his wife or girlfriend or, or whoever. So uh, I, I thought that was connected. Well, that's cool. That I was that was one of my questions to ask was what was the connection? Okay. Right. Well, yeah. Right. So there there was a there was fr- from what I know that there's not a there's not any um, anybody on the West Coast doing hardware. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was just a thing that I wanted to do. Um, Especially on the Paci- yeah. in the Pacific Northwest for sure. Yeah. There was a there was a dude doing it pretty close to where I'm at, but I think he might be done. Um, I don't know for sure. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just an opportunity for me to, to get parts for myself and hopefully um, give builders a a base and a and a solid uh, connection. Just um, I'm not a one stop shop yet. Um, it's mm-hmm. you know a pretty big investment to get a little bit of everything. But yeah, yeah, for sure. It's just uh, we've been at it only a year now, so okay. Uh, hopefully, it can grow, and you know, not, I'm not you know trying to like take over the the drum hardware supply business or anything. Yeah. I just musicians friend, watch out! You're on you're on notice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna if if Walmart could sell hardware, I mean they probably <laughs> would. But. They would, yeah. Let's not give them any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> guitar Guitar Center's got that covered. Yeah. But. Yeah. But uh, it, but I think the th- the funny thing is right now is people are they're wanting to have that mom and pop kind of place to go, even if it's online. You know, they there's something about just knowing the face or knowing the person behind, you know, the brand or yeah for or, sure or whatnot. It's appealing to and especially our generation who are kind of burned out with over corporization of you know music and music instruments and everything else that you know. Uh, if you want somebody like yourself to make you to make uh, a drum or you know get drum supplies from, they're 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 you know they're more. I think they're more happy to do that because you're you're supporting local business, you know, and right. You're supporting an individual instead of like a, a corporation. Yeah. Well, you know, even more than you know, I know there's there's probably a lot of kids out there that you know look at custom drums and you know when you. I hate to use the word custom because there's companies out there that call themselves custom that are manufactured. You know, they're not they're not hand built. Yeah, yeah. But even if you go to Guitar Center and, and buy a drum kit or a drum or a snare or anything, like take it down to your local builder and, and have them work on it. Like you'll yeah. have a way better drum. Like, yeah. Do bearing yeah. edges. Like do snare beds. You're you may not be able to drop um, two thousand dollars on a on a custom hand built kit, but like if you Spend a hundred or two hundred and have the dude 
that's your local drum builder work on your kit, you're going to be way more satisfied than yeah, for sure. Than you even realize, probably. Yeah. Well, and I think you know the thing is with um, you know like the snare drum is is very is like the most important thing I think, and people are going to justify buying you know, or paying a little extra cash to get a customized drum, even if it is made from Guitar Center or something like that. Yeah, totally. But, I mean, the cool thing about snare drums, too, like, like I mean, when you're, when you're talking about, like, bass drums and, and, and toms, you're, you're really, like, trying to get a certain sound, and there's, like, only a certain, you know, thing, number of things you can do within the, like, help of how things should be. But, like, snare drums, I mean... There's a company out there. I don't want to name them because I don't like them, but they make a concrete snare. I mean, oh, yeah. you can make a snare drum out of anything. Yeah, yeah. You got yeah. plastic, wood, metal, fiberglass, mm -hmm. carbon fiber. I mean, snare drums are, are insane. You could do so many cool things with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, that company that you're talking about, it, it, it's 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 crazy, but you know, it's not. Uh, it's kind of. It's I don't know. I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Well, uh, conglomeration. Conglomeration. <laughs> I was trying to think of like something to rhyme with it, but I can't. All right. Have, my my daughter is one. She loves to smell everything, and she has to smell like drinks. Can you can you can you go out just side just for a minute? Shh. Okay. She she's been playing with this puzzle that makes animal sounds. So if you hear a sheep randomly through the podcast, that is uh, courtesy of my daughter. So anyway, anyways. I think we have the same puzzle, and if you, and if this is like the things randomly go off in the middle of the night. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Yes, it does that. It's it's possessed. It scares me every time. Yeah, you got to You got to put all the puzzle pieces back in the puzzle every night, or like in the middle of the night, you'll just hear like, Meh. yeah, like, what the hell is? This? Is there yeah. a sheep breaking in the house? Yeah, Do, would we buy sheep or something? What's going on? Yeah, <laughs> I hear you. Kids toys. Yeah, problems. Yeah. Bad problems, yeah, for sure. Well, uh, uh, to I guess so. Now we'll, we'll give away your uh, your uh, proto tom. What do you call them? Proto toms? Is that what you call them? Proto toms. Proto toms. They're kind of like proto toms, but they're also prototypes. Yep. So uh, we'll give those away. But uh, before we do that, uh, I just want to just tell you thank you so much for for being on. But thank you for you know putting this whole raffle thing together. It does. Uh, it definitely mean, uh, meant a lot to me and my wife and my family and everything so we're uh we couldn't when 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 i when i told her you know it was like we we were almost kind of like really you know it just it just it it still feels surreal to us that you know uh that the drum community here on instagram and podcasting is so tight and uh that you know people actually care definitely why well, i, I want to uh thank you for doing what you do and i want to thank all the builders that are involved um Oh yeah, love custom drums. Just stepped in. Um, some of the people, like King Drums, he's do. We're doing the shirt thing. He's rad. Um, there's there's companies like Arrow, Arrow Custom Drums uh, in Philadelphia. He was like the first one to jump on, get oh, yeah. a donation out. He started sharing. He just took his own time. He made a made a picture with everybody's logos on it. And then, I mean, Sweet Spot Clutches, K Breaks, all those guys that donated that have been on your podcast. Oh yeah. Um, Everybody that shared, snare drum freaks, uh, 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 drummers corner, G, drummers corner, G two, yeah, Chris, uh, yeah, Chris is a great guy. Two G, D G, whatever. Let's see, <laughs> let's see, drummers guide to gear. So D G two D, I think this is coming from the dyslexic, so it's probably wrong. <laughs> yeah, his name's Chris, so yeah, Chris, he's a yeah, good guy. Yeah. All, everybody that shared the post and got the word out, I mean that's. That's huge. Yeah, and it's you know, uh, uh, and like I said, you know, for you, you know, uh, it's 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 funny how just a a random Facebook message, you know, has changed the whole you know the way I look at social media and stuff like that. You know, definitely. Yeah. I mean, there's there's other there's I already mentioned Cog Drums. I mean, that dude put a pretty nice donation in, and mm -hmm. uh, there's another guy out there, Doc Sweeney Drums. Oh yeah, yeah. He put a he put a generous donation in and like those dudes don't need to win drums. They build great drums themselves. So mm -hmm. that's just, that's just community love. So yeah, mad props to everybody that uh, got this thing going. I appreciate it. I, uh, I wish we could have done better. I felt like we were going to do better. 
But we still got this week, you know, still get out there and buy raffle tickets. You got three more drums to win, so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I th- and, you know, uh, um, and I think it was fun doing this podcast this way where, you know, announcing the, the winners and, you know, interviewing you and learning about your product and, you know, what you're wanting to accomplish. So it's, uh, it's just, uh, it was a good time. So, uh, so let me, uh, let me go and get ready. I'm going to kick the drum roll one more time. Should I, uh, let's see. Let's do it on the floor, Tom, this time instead. Who do we got? I got a name here, you got and a name. I hope I don't butcher it, but his <laughs> name's Benjamin. Benjamin. And his last name is, I'm going to go Wider, W-I-D-D-E-R, uh-huh. Witter, Witter, Wider, one of those. Witter, Wider. And is he on a, yeah. is he on a, on a, did he leave an Instagram name? All I, all I got is an email address for him. Okay. I just got a, I just got a comment uh, from from the guy that won the era drum, and he's like, oh, my God. Yeah. So uh, let's see if I can. I'll, I'll have you uh, have you email me that uh, or send me a message with that uh, email address, and I'll see if I can track him down and post on okay. the, on the Instagram. But uh, – so uh, you, uh, you guys, uh, thank you everybody who has entered into the to the raffle. Uh, great companies, and it's uh, like I said, I've had all of them on the podcast, and now I've had you, and then um, I'm gonna be working on getting buddy buddy love on here for sure. Yeah, you gotta get all these guys on. One 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 last thing that I I just wanted to tell. I mean, I talked to this dude in person, and and I thanked him, but I want to thank him again. Uh, Ramy from A and F Drum Co. Oh yeah. Is, like the dude's the man like straight up he's yeah. he was so helpful with this um he builds badass drums he's like one of the nicest dudes you could ever talk to and mm-hmm. just like seriously thank you Ramy. if you're listening you hear this i appreciate you a lot yes 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 thank thank you man yeah he i had him on and uh it was a short interview we did i'm gonna i'm gonna have him back on again so we can really uh dive deep into uh to a and f and everything they do but yeah uh, but you know, Salt Drums, Era, Seventeen Ten, all those guys. I mean, they're all just they're they're just great dudes, you know. And uh, and so are you. You're you're a, a fantastic dude. Don't tell everybody. Just yeah. Well, okay, we'll we'll keep it on the DL. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, but yeah, I I appreciate you doing this. And uh, uh, anytime you will be on the podcast, uh, let me know. I uh, I will I will I will make. Uh, uh, time for you, my friend. Hey, anytime you need a co-host, I'm here. Yeah, I cuss yeah. a lot, probably. That's... Sorry if I cuss too much, but no, other than right. that, I'm good. No, I, I, uh, I, uh, I don't. I try not to self-censor people. People talk the way they're going to talk. That's all right. You know, I'm, it's not for me or anybody else to judge. So, uh, but uh, yeah, and uh, and if you got something going on with uh, you know West Coast uh, Drum Supply. Uh, let me know. We'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll have you on and talk about it as well. If you got something going on. Cool. If you build drums and need hardware, hit me up. Yeah, hit up, hit them up, hit them <laughs> up, guys. Well, cool, man. Well, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the, stop the recording. So uh, thank you, guys. Uh, look out for another podcast where we uh, announce the uh, the other winners. Uh, dates to be determined uh, to be determined for sure. But uh, uh, thank you for being on and. Uh, We'll see you guys. Peace. Peace. So I'm going to just stop it real quick.